All right, hello everybody. Today I'm doing a little handheld because I want to show you. I got a new little toy here. I've got me a Fender Bassman 100. Um, it is a 70s model, as I recall. I will do a little bit more digging, but the whole point here is I got it from Reverb. And my understanding, it's a bit scuffed up. You know, the Tolex is a bit rough, but the bigger thing I wanted really is the transformers, but um, it is not in perfect working order. From what I understand, they didn't say which, but one channel is just low but works, and the other channel is intermittent. It'll come in and out. So I'm gonna try and just get my troubleshooting skills honed by practicing that. I'm gonna also revert it to stock. They have some weird stuff going where they converted the extra uh, jack here to being a line out with a little fader here to adjust that, you know, potential order. But uh, let's come around, I'll give you the top view. So I wanna practice my skills and get that fixed, but the bigger thing is, is, if you look how much real estate there is in here, I plan on converting this to a Dumble ODS. So you're gonna also see me do that. So this will be a two-part video series. One part is just gonna be troubleshooting and fixing this amp and getting it to working order. And the other part is gonna to be to do the Dumble ODS. So it uh, does look like it has a few things kind of weird. Like right here, you can see they used some electrical tape, which is definitely kind of a no, no go in most situations. It has, um, they've replaced a couple of these capacitors because the standards, the originals are these, either these dark red ones here, down at the end, which I'm blocking the light, or these blue ones here. So those will be, um, as I've heard, these blue ones tend to be not great, but we'll see, I'll, I'll, I'll check them out. Uh, and then of course, they've got some of these old style, large uh, ceramic type capacitors as well. Um, but I will be going through this guy and, let me uh, focus a little bit, go through this guy and uh, fixing it first and then cleaning it up. So we will give you guys a good view of the whole thing. So let me know if you have any questions or if you want to see anything specific done. Hopefully I will see those questions before we get too far down the road, but enjoy. Okay, hello everybody. So new video series. Um, I believe I've done a short video intro to this before, but I can't recall off the top of my head. Um, but effectively, uh, I'm going to repair this. I, I bought this on Reverb with it functioning, but has problems on one channel. I don't remember if they said it was normal or bass, where it will cut, be intermittent and cut in and out. And then the other channel works fine, but doesn't have the best tone. Uh, I also have quickly looked in here and seen that there has been some monster in here doing all kinds of atrocities. Um, I, the, um, but the generally the gist of that then is that i'm going to have to go in here i've got my variac here that you should be able to see i'm going to slowly but surely adjust the power and bring it up uh, I, it didn't have power tubes i put four brand new power tubes in but i since this is an unknown amp to me i don't know the state of the power transformers i'm going to slowly bring it up and just see if anything seems to be going crazy uh, until i get near the voltages that i want and if then it looks okay then we will go from there so uh, but I'm going to quickly, um, I've got to find a couple of things in general. I need to put um, my speaker output into it and a few other things like that. I'll, I might do the dummy load at first, but we'll see. But uh, I'll get that set up now and then we'll go from there. All right, so I have right now uh, an input sine wave coming in. I can show that to you. I haven't turned anything on yet. But if I connect to my where this input's coming in, I can show you. Oh, I don't know if you can see that or not, actually. Can you see the... You cannot see that. Um, anyway, I've got an oscilloscope and I can see that I've got a good sine wave. I, I'm trying to think of how I could make that more visible to you guys. Um, so here's my oscilloscope. I hope that's in, in screen, but uh, basically I've got a nice sine wave coming in at about, uh, it's at about, uh, all right, there it's back. I don't know if that's just my connection here or what, but um, so that's an input sine wave that's coming out of a, a, a HP uh, oscillator that I've got. And uh, with that running in, I will be able to then test it throughout the circuit. Now, the thing that I've understood is that the signal's weak and problematic in a lot of places. So I will be trying to probe that once I get up. But the first thing I want to do, actually, I'll go ahead and actually turn that off and I'll think about it. The first, I just want to get that set up. The first thing I want to do is get my chopstick and that I just got, there it is. I'm going to first slowly power it up and check some voltages with my multimeter and see if that looks okay. So I think I might be able to set this about here and see if that'll be visible to you guys as well. It looks like it is. Um, and I'm going to kind of stand over to the side. I will connect this up to the chassis so that I get a good ground connection. 
in theory. And then I'm going to be probing around carefully to find uh, where things uh, are for voltages and whatnot as I slowly bring it up. So it's on the variac. Turn the voltage on the variac, but I'm going to put it up to about 10 or 15 volts. I will first put this on AC volts, and I will see at my input, I'm getting about 10 volts AC. So that's going through the transformer and should be coming out the transformer also some voltage DC or AC as well. Um, three volts, that's weird. Oh, I don't have the power on. So, ten volts there, ten volts there, ten volts there, ten volts there. I'm just trying to see base really low level voltages and make sure they're coming through. It's coming out the transformer at this end. I have 25 volts, and that's what I'd expect. Now, it's going to rectify this through the through the rectifying bridge there to 34 volts. So that's not enough to do anything, but I'm also knowing now that I'm safely pushing 34 volts across this right now. And I can check and see if anything is running at a specific voltage. Negative 3.9, that's coming off of the... Uh, negative four volts coming off of the bias circuit, etc. So I'm just checking around, seeing that I get some voltages that make sense. Uh, 33 volts at the anode of that tube. On my heaters, I should have no AC volts, but okay. All right, so what I'm gonna do is slowly bring the, that voltage upwards. So I might be blocking for a minute, but I'm just going to bring it up. I think what I might do is give myself a an, a DC or an AC volts and clip this somewhere so that I can see what I'm at. So I'm at 18 volts right now. I don't see anything smoking. No problems. Oh, I also do want to turn my volumes everywhere down to zero for now. Everything back to the beginning. And. 19 volts, 24 volts, still nothing smoking. I don't even see a slight glow yet on the tubes, but my AC volts are probably pretty low there as well. I'm going to bring it up now to 38 volts. Nothing out of control. A few more volts. I'll get it up to about halfway up to 60, and then I'll probably stop there and test a few things as well. All right, we're about 60 volts now. I don't see any glowing, but I don't hear any pops and crackles of things going wrong. So what we'll do now is I will switch this to AC volts or DC volts again. We will check post rectifier. We're at about 218. This is at a cathode. We're at 0.4 volts. 51 volts there. Let's check one of my anode voltages right here. 189 at that tube. 178 at that one. 165. 164, 158, so you know things are looking decent there. Um, 215, 215, 215, 215. So across the power tubes, everything looks good. So I'm feeling okay with that. So what I'll do is put this back on so I can see what my AC voltage is. Switch it back to AC. And we're sitting pretty at 60. So I'll bring it up a little more. 72. Now there's a whole new set of uh, capacitors down here as well on the bottom side. I can definitely 
switch to DC volts. You can see what I'm doing here, but I'll touch that one. It's a 263, 262, 250, 228. All right, so those are all within kind of what I'd expect as well as I'm slowly coming up. Nothing up in some crazy amount or down to zero. Back to our AC volts. Let's see here. I'm just gonna bring it up to 120 or to one, yeah, 120 now. I'll let it sit right there at 121. We've got our, our jewel light. I do see glow on the tubes. Everything looks like it's working right now. So, uh, what I want to do now is I'm going to shut it back off, take it off of the thing where I brought that up. Well, actually, I'll just double check some voltages again for DC volts. And in the pocket, 442, 440. 40 etc so those are all looking all the tubes are getting the kind of voltages they should get so negative bias um, let's check right here negative 55 volts I do believe for the type of tube that's about correct all right so um, at this point, again, like I said, I think that the amp seems to not be smoking or doing anything funny as I slowly brought it up, so I'm going to shut this off. I will pull it out of the um, surge, or out of the uh, variac, and we'll try it again just directly in. So, that's we're getting... I'm going to turn that down just a teeny bit. Alright, so... Oh yeah, I had the master volume off. I don't know if that would relate to this or not either, because I don't know if that... I'm not looking at the schematic right now, but the master volume might actually be shutting it off before it gets... Oh yeah, there's... Okay, so there's my output. If I adjust the master volume... Yeah, okay, so... Maybe I really do need to let you guys see what I'm doing on this. So, let's see if I can slide this guy carefully underneath. Now oh, that's how to work. Alright, so I'm going to take a short second to rearrange this. I'm going to slide this guy back a little bit and have the scope in front so we can look at that. So I'll be back in just a moment. Alright, so now you can see this is the master volume. And as I adjust the master volume, that's going up and down. So I'm going to put this to max. Um, now you're hearing a little bit of the ringing coming out of the other end, but... So right now that's at about 24 volts coming out just at the output of the phase inverter before that goes into the output transformer. That's some pretty strong stuff, but I also have the volume lower here. I could really, and now we can start to see some of that characteristic um, rounding off of the top as I really start pegging the input. See that? And you can hear the noise because it's actually creating vibrations in the resistors behind it, I believe, if I understand correctly. They're basically pushing so much current and stuff through those that it creates vibrations in the resistors. But you can see, although somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, maybe that's a vibration in the transformer. It's still getting into a nice heat, into a dummy load, but, and you can see the characteristic kind of compression that starts happening. So we're at 10 volume. Now that input seems to be doing okay. So let's check the second input. Um, that one dropped down a little bit, but again, that's because of the uh, the way you have a high and a low. We'll go back to that. See the difference there. Oops. So if you can see right there, that's almost covering the full scale there. But if I go to the second in input here, it's about almost half the size. Um, so let's go ahead and go to the normal channel. And when you look at that, the normal channel has no... Oh, sorry, I forget. If you have treble, mid, and bass turned down, let's turn those up, that will also alter the tone quite a bit. So... Interestingly enough, if I'm pegging that normal channel... Oh, so look, you can see there's actually a significant amount of some kind of ugly noise carrying across the top of the signal. So this may be what this channel has been talking about, sounding kind of crummy. Um, 
there's definitely something amiss with that channel. Now, one of the things I've noticed when I was looking at this was that this channel has some stuff that looked like it was soldered in a pretty mediocre way, like almost like tack soldered in. But, uh, I'm almost smelling something that smells like a burning rubber, which definitely is making me a little nervous. I'm wondering what could be burning, though. I don't see anything burning. The tubes all seem okay. I don't seem to be touching anything, I don't think. Okay. So, master volume, of course, I can bring down. But, so I'm getting, it looks to me like the bass instrument channel looks good. The normal instrument channel has got some significant problems. So, we'll have to try and spend some time debugging what that might be. Um, again, I think it's a good idea to chop stick. So, what I might do is shut this back down, plug it into a real speaker load, so I can hear with my ears what's going on. And... Um, I'll keep the volume down a little bit low because I don't want to deafen myself. And the whole bigger point really is just to hear the sine wave going through it, tap around and hear if we hear anything specifically audible. So I'll get that switch around set up and we'll look at that next. All right, I've got a little bit wider angled shot there so that we can see that a little better. Um, so let's turn her back on again now. And I've got this hooked up to a real speaker as well, but the volume is turned down quite a bit. So hopefully we won't be brutally loud. Give that a second to start conducting again. Okay. Definitely getting output. I don't know why I'm not picking it up here all of a sudden now. It's me. For some reason, all of a sudden, I don't know why I'm not getting anything here. When I was before, which I should be still. I will check this at a earlier stage then and see what I get. If you know it, I'm being very cautious not to actually insert anything into the amp. We know we get, well, one finger at a time into the amp. We know we get a good signal here. So my scope probe maybe is being weird. I don't know. Oh, I'm getting a perfect square wave out of that. So that means that it's not the scope probe. I don't know why all of a sudden when I'm connecting into this ground point there and this output point here that is sending signal through. I'm still getting, for some weird reason, nothing here. Um, but, oh, there we go. I just had the master volume so low it wasn't really triggering anything at the scale I had it at. So I just want volume level enough to tap around. You can see there's a weird carrier wave. It's really fat, whereas over here it was a lot cleaner. When I go to this input over here, watch this. Well, I guess maybe it's not so clean. Maybe I'm just assuming things. Um, all right, so, so far, so good. I don't see any major problem. So one of the things I wanted to check as well, that will be a good thing to look at right now, is if we're leaking DC on areas where we're not supposed to have DC. So I've got my meter set to DC, and I will check on the other side of capacitors. Nothing there. Nothing there. Nothing there. Nothing there. Here I should get, yeah, 240. So these are the tone stack ones. I'm not seeing anything on those. That's negative 55. Okay, so that's my bias voltage, that's okay. Um, well, we're getting 460 millivolts here. I don't know if that makes sense because that's on the other side of the ground. I guess that's possible, yeah. So 
all in all, it looks like we're doing all right. Um, I will have to double check what the expected voltage is for the basement 100. So we're going to take a short break. I might get a guitar and play in it and just see how it sounds like. Maybe they reported it as sounding bad when it really didn't, but we'll go from there. So, all right, we'll be back in a little bit. All right, so first of all, one of the most common complaints I get is, do you tune your guitars? Yes, I do. And you'll see hopefully right here, if that's visible on the screen, like it's not visible on the screen. <laughs> Let me back it up a little bit here. So this is just my smartphone with an app that I have, but I do how to tune and I tune. So the problem I've had more has been that my, one of my guitars, I think had a problem with the intonation and the combination of that and the, um, spacing of the strings, the, uh, I'm also drawing a blank on the term. Anyway, it's totally blanking on me. I haven't played the guitar for about 20 years, but I can't even think of the term now. Action, there we go, the action. So the action was uh, a bit high, and I think that was causing me to press down and bend the strings out of tune. Uh, it was so high. So I lowered it down uh, maybe about half the distance it was, and it's staying in tune way better now. So hopefully the rest of you guys' videos from me won't be so painful. But it sounds pretty good to me. So that's the bass channel. This, there's a deep switch, so if you listen. You can hear that cutting back a little bit of that. Here's the second input, which is the lower, you know, the low input. Gets a little quieter, but not bad. So all in all, that channel seems pretty good to me. Let's check out the normal channel. Sounds fine. I'm not going to mess too much with that. There's a bright switch. Definitely hear that. I'll try the other channel. So to me, honestly, this amp sounds just fine. So, whatever they reported was a potential problem, it doesn't seem to be one. Now, there are some weirdly placed mods in this guy. Um, I have to hit my forehead stock off the ceiling. Um, there's a few weirdly placed, placed mods in this thing. I don't understand. Um, this was some kind of direct out so that if you plugged into this one, instead of it being the speaker, this drops through a resistor of some kind, then through another variable resistor of some kind so that you can adjust the output. And I, I don't understand what they were going with there, but at any rate, um, the, uh, yeah, it's just kind of weird. But the, um, that mod is just, I'm going to throw that away. I also mentioned, I did see, like there's some, not some great soldering here. This is bubbled up in a funny way. So it's potential the bias could go off at any point because there's no bias points there. That, I mean, if that goes bad, that's the, one of the filter caps for the bias. Um, and then some of these solder connections that I've seen were just tacked down. They weren't like, if you looked at the connection here. It's like they did a J hook a little bit, I guess, but it's not a great one. Uh, this one looks like it's tacked on. That one is definitely tacked on. So the, just whoever was in here didn't do the, the most stellar job I've seen. Um, so at any rate, uh, this turned out to be a bit of a disappointment in a lot of ways because there doesn't seem to be anything wrong with it, but you did go, see me going through some of the general troubleshooting process I would take to try and carefully figure out what's amiss with this amp. So basement 100, I will have a video showing the schematic and whatnot, but at this point, the bigger reason I bought this amp 
was for the transformers and the sockets. I am going to gut it. I know you guys are probably going, oh, what a travesty, but this is a, you know, a, one of the generations, the Basement 100 is not fondly considered an amazing sounding app. I think it's clean enough that uh, probably some people would mod it to add um, some inputs and out, or a, a send and return effects loop so that you could do uh, some effects inside of it, make a pedal platform. Uh, it does have nice clean headroom. It was in that period where CBS was um, t tinkering with it, I believe. Uh, although this still says Fender Musical Instruments. I may do a little deeper dive on what exact year this is and, and cover that the, as part of the video series. But uh, this is pretty much the end of this video series because I, my next step is I'm going to gut this thing completely and build a dumble inside of it. So hopefully you guys will be interested in that. It's a dumble uh, overdrive special. This is going to be based on the number 124. And we'll have more information about that to come. I'll give you a little in, info, intro to that as well and, and what I'm planning on building with that. So hopefully everybody enjoys that. Let me know what you think of this video uh, and see if there's anything else you can think of that maybe I did wrong. But uh, I will also quickly say, uh, the other thing I first checked was that this fuse was correct. That's a very common thing that's important to do as well. And it is set to three amps is what's, what's printed on the back. So I'm just gonna play around with the guitar amp a little bit. So thanks guys, have a good one.